Hello, my name is Joshua Brown from the interview training company HowToBecome.com and in this presentation I will teach you how to pass your software engineer interview. So if you have an interview coming up for any software engineering role then please make sure you watch this video from start to finish because I promise to make you the standout candidate. To achieve that goal this is what I'll cover. I'll start off by giving you a list of technical software engineer interview questions that I strongly recommend you prepare for. I'll then provide you with example high scoring answers to those technical interview questions to help you to succeed. Plus, I'll also make sure to give you some essential tips for passing your technical software engineering interview before finally telling you how you can instantly download these slides plus 30 great answers to software engineer interview questions in a PDF guide. And just very quickly, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I want to help you to pass your interview by giving you brilliant answers to the toughest software engineering interview questions. And I can only do that if you are subscribed and please don't forget to hit that like button because this tells me you find these tutorials useful. Okay, let's take a look at that first software engineering interview question. But just before we do so, it's important to note that due to the nature of technical questions needing to be quite in depth to explain your knowledge and show your experience, I'm going to give you two brilliant answers to each question. Firstly, I'll give you one detailed answer which will go really in depth. It's quite a long answer, but it really covers the full scope of the question. I'll then also give you a short condensed answer to help those that struggle with interviews and information overload. Feel free to adjust and combine both these answers to best suit your needs and your experience. So let's look at question one. Question one is this. Describe your experience with front end technologies like HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So here is my detailed answer, my top scoring answer to this interview question. Describe your experience with front end technologies like HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Throughout my career as a software engineer, I've extensively used HTML, CSS and JavaScript, the core technologies behind front end development to create responsive and dynamic user interfaces that enhance user experience. My proficiency with HTML allows me to structure web content effectively, ensuring that the semantic meaning of the information is clear and accessible. I have used HTML5 to leverage new semantic elements and APIs for better structure and interaction. With CSS, I have designed aesthetically pleasing layouts that are responsive to different screen sizes using Flexbox and Grid systems. My experience with CSS preprocessors like SAS has enabled me to write more maintainable and scalable style sheets. JavaScript has been central to adding interactivity to web pages. I've developed various features from simple form validations to complex single page applications, SBAs, using both vanilla JavaScript and modern frameworks like React and Vue. My work with asynchronous JavaScript, including Promises and Async and Await, has improved the performance of web applications by making them more responsive and interactive. In one project, for example, I led the front-end development of an e-commerce platform, implementing a dynamic and responsive user face with React. This included creating reusable components, managing state efficiency with Redux, and ensuring a seamless user experience across a wide range of devices. Overall, my experience with these front-end technologies has equipped me with the skills necessary to tackle complex UI challenges, optimizing for performance, accessibility, and cross-browser compatibility. Wow, that is a brilliant answer to this interview question. It's quite a long and in-depth answer, but like I said, it really shows your experience and that's what you need to get across in a technical interview question. But let's now take a look at a more simplified approach. So here's the same question again, but this is my short answer. In front end development, I leverage HTML for structuring content, CSS for styling and layout, and JavaScript for dynamic interactivity. My experience includes responsive design and modern frameworks like React to build engaging user-friendly interfaces. Prioritizing performance, accessibility and compatibility ensures a seamless user experience across devices. In one project, for example, I led the front-end development of an e-commerce platform, implementing a dynamic and responsive user interface with React. This included creating reusable components, 
managing state efficiency with Redox, and ensuring a seamless user experience across a wide range of devices. You can see that this answer is still strong, it details your knowledge, but also provides an example showing the hiring manager that you have the practical experience to back up your knowledge. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Question two is this. Given a string containing just the characters, and here are those characters, determine if the input string is valid. So an input string is valid if open brackets must be closed by the same type of brackets and open brackets must be closed in the correct order. So let's first take a look at my detailed answer of how to answer this question effectively and score highly and impress the hiring manager. To determine if a string of brackets is balanced, I use a stack which is an ideal data structure for keeping track of opening brackets and ensuring they match their corresponding closing brackets. The algorithm iterates through each character of the input string. When it encounters an opening bracket, it pushes it onto the stack. Upon encountering a closing bracket, it checks the top of the stack. If the top is the matching opening bracket, it pops from the stack. Otherwise, it means the string is not balanced. The string is considered balanced if the stack is empty after processing all characters. Here's a brief rundown of the algorithm in pseudocode. Number one, initialize an empty stack. Number two, for each character in the input string, A, if it's an opening bracket, push it onto the stack. B, if it's a closing bracket, check if the stack is empty or the top of the stack doesn't match the opening bracket. If so, return false. Otherwise, pop the stack. Three, after processing all characters, if the stack is empty, return true, otherwise return false. This approach efficiently checks for balance by ensuring that each closing bracket properly matches the most recent unresolved opening bracket, accounting for both type and order. Okay, now let's take a look at my short answer to this interview question. To verify if a string's brackets are balanced, I apply a stack-based approach. Each opening bracket is pushed onto the stack, and for every closing bracket encountered, the stack is popped, providing it matches the opening type. A balanced string results in an empty stack at the end. This method ensures correct order and matching brackets. Now don't go anywhere, as I still have plenty more software engineering technical interview questions and answers to give you in this video tutorial. But when you're ready, and only if you want to, you can click that link in the top right hand corner or in the pinned comments below the video. It will take you through to my website, howtobecome.com, where you can download my top 30 software engineer interview questions and answers, which includes all of the most technical questions, behavioral questions, and common software engineering interview questions and answers currently used by hiring managers. And it's all in a PDF guide immediately available for you. Okay, here's the next question for you. How would you design a scalable system for handling high traffic and large amounts of data? Oh, I love this question. So here is my detailed answer. Designing a scalable system that can handle high traffic and large amounts of data requires a strategic approach that considers various factors, including architecture, data management, and resource allocation. Firstly, adopting a microservices architecture can greatly enhance scalability by dividing the systems into small independent services. This enables individual components to be scaled independently based on demand, allowing for more efficient use of resources and easier maintenance. Incorporating load balancers is crucial in distributing incoming traffic evenly across multiple servers, preventing any single server from becoming a bottleneck. This ensures the system remains responsive and available even under high load conditions. Cacheing is another important aspect of scalable design. By storing frequently accessed data in fast access hardware, such as RAM, it reduces the number of direct queries to the database, therefore decreasing latency and improving response times for end users. For data management, utilizing distributed databases and implementing strategies like sharding can help manage large data sets by distributing them across multiple databases. This not only improves performance, but also enhances data availability and redundancy. Lastly, employing content delivery networks, CDNs, can significantly reduce load times by cacheing static content in geographically distributed servers. 
This is especially beneficial for global applications, ensuring users from different regions can access data quickly. By combining these strategies with a continuous monitoring and optimization process, one can design a system that is not only scalable, but also robust and efficient, capable of handling growing amounts of traffic and data seamlessly. Okay, now let's take a look at my short answer to this interview question. For scalable systems, I advocate a combination of microservices for flexibility, load balancers for even traffic distribution, cacheing for quick data access, and distributed databases for scalability. Incorporating CDNs further optimizes content delivery. These strategies collectively ensure robust handling of high traffic volumes and data scalability. That's a brilliant, concise answer to that interview question. But like I said, feel free to combine the answers with your own experiences too, to make them even better. So question four is this, what are the main differences between HTTP and HTTPS? Okay, here is my detailed answer. HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and HTTPS, HTTP Secure, are foundational web protocols used to transmit data over the internet. The primary difference between the two is security. For example, HTTP is unencrypted, making it vulnerable to eavesdropping and man-in-the-middle attacks. In contrast, HTTPS provides a secure layer via SSL and TLS encryption safeguarding data integrity and confidentiality. This encryption ensures that data transmitted between the web server and browser remains private and secure. In terms of speed, historically, HTTPS has been considered slightly slower than HTTP due to the overhead of encryption and decryption processes. However, with advancements in technology and more efficient algorithms, this speed difference has become negligible for most applications. For use cases, HTTP is suitable for browsing non-sensitive information where data security isn't a major concern. HTTPS, on the other hand, is essential for any transactions involving personal, financial or sensitive data such as online banking, shopping or any form of data submission that requires privacy and security. Understanding these differences is crucial for web development and ensuring the security and privacy of user data. Whenever possible, HTTPS should be used to protect web interactions and build trust with users. Okay, here's my concise, short answer for you. HTTP is unsecure, transmitting data plainly, while HTTPS encrypts the communication via SSL and TLS, safeguarding against interception. HTTPS introduces slight overhead due to encryption, but is vital for protecting sensitive information, making it the standard for secure web transactions. Now, in preparation for your software engineering interview, I also recommend you prepare answers to the following questions. Describe the purpose and use cases of design patterns in software development. What is the difference between functional and imperative programming? Discuss the differences between SQL and no SQL databases. When would you choose one over the other? What is a deadlock in the context of multi-threading and how can it be prevented? What is polymorphism and object-orientated programming and why is it important? Tell us about a time you had to go above and beyond to complete a project. Tell me about a project where things didn't go as planned. What happened and what did you learn from it? Share an experience where you had to learn a new technology or language quickly for a project. How did you approach it? What programming languages are you most comfortable with and why? What's your experience with Agile and Scrum mythologies? How do you ensure your code is clean and maintainable? Describe your experience with cloud platforms like AWS, Google Cloud or Azure. How do you prioritize your work when handling multiple projects or deadlines? Now, if you want to get the answers to those questions, plus the full list of 30 software engineer interview questions, and if you want to accelerate your learning even further to pass your interview at the first attempt, then click that link right now in the top right hand corner of this video or in the pinned comments below for two reasons. The first reason is it will take you through to my website, howtobecome.com. We can get all of these answers we just covered plus a total of 30 brilliant responses to software engineering interview questions. And secondly, 
the next reason is I've given you three smart questions to ask at the end of your software engineer interview on that page to make you the standout candidate and leave a lasting impression at your interview. It's a brilliant resource guaranteed to help you prepare effectively for your interview and also more importantly, put your ahead of the competition. Make sure you check out that link. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to subscribe as I'm on a mission to help as many people as possible pass their job interviews and I can only do that if you are subscribed and please also hit that like button as that encourages me to make more videos just like these and if you have any questions regarding any specific interview do let me know in the comment section below where I'll get back to you with even more interview tips and advice. Oh and finally don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn. I've put my LinkedIn link in the description below. It's always great to connect with like-minded professionals such as yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you all the best with your interview. Have a brilliant day.